Revelation 2 and verse 5 says, Remember therefore from where you have fallen. And the second word is repent. Repent. There's a false teaching out there today that says Christians never need to repent. I'm just going to make a bold statement. That's a lie. Christians need to repent. Here's an example of it. That's the most ridiculous thing. Because I'm going to tell you about Christians. If you're looking for Christians to all be perfect, you have not been in the church very long. Come on, somebody. If you're looking for your pastor to be perfect, you haven't been around very many pastors. Hello? There's not any perfect people. We're all in the process of being come, of being made like Jesus Christ. And in that process, as we're walking towards that final victory, there are moments in our life where God says, hey, it's time to repent. It's time to get it right. It's time to change your thinking. It's time to turn your mind around. It's time to understand that, 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 that He is everything. And so if our love towards Him has grown cold and waned, then we need to repent. If there's something that has crept up in us, right, that has become more important than Jesus, and we start loving that more than Him, we've got to say, God, forgive me. Let the first love return. That's called repentance. And then the third step is redo. Redo. Revelation 2, 5. It says, repent and do the first works. Another version, the New International Version says, do the things you did at first. Do the things you did at first. It makes it very plain. We may be doing love-chilling things and failing to do love-warming things. To rekindle that first love, we should purposely purposefully do the things we once did. And when we do them, we'll fall in love with Jesus over again. So today I want to ask you a question. If you look back in your life and you, there was a moment when you were more in love with Jesus than now, what things were you doing then that today you're not doing? Then that's what you need to do. What actions did you take when you were being completely faithful to God? When you were full on loving and serving Him? What activities were you engaged in when you were leaning uh, on the strength of God rather than your own strength? And, and remembering what you did before can help you see what you need to start doing again. Do the things that you did at first. The third step is very practical. We've got to do the first works. We've got to get back to whatever produced the love in our relationship with Christ at first. This suggests that there's a restoration of the original fellowship that was broken by our own neglect. For the believer often means, you know, back to prayer, back to Bible reading, back to meditation, back to obedient uh, service, back to worship. It could mean uh, just fellowshipping with believers. Years ago, I was with a group of believers in a church where I was a youth pastor with some other young adults, and I'll never forget Daryl Rhodes. He's still one of my friends on Facebook still, and, and uh, we were getting ready to all leave, and all of a sudden he just teared up, and I said, what's going on, Daryl? He said, well, you know, he said, you know, there was a time a few years ago when he said when all of us, whenever we would leave one another, we would hold hands and we would pray over each other. He said, but something happened. All of a sudden, we just stopped doing that. He said, why did we stop doing that? Why don't we have that kind of love for each other? And, and his brokenness, just I've never forgotten. It just touched my heart. How many of you think that's a good idea, amen, in, in, in 2020, amen? Every time the believers get together, amen, if you're going to, you know, pray for one another as you leave each other's presence. Give each other a blessing. Amen. Do what you did at first. If you've fallen out of love with your spouse, do what you did at first. Well, if in my relationship with my wife, I start feeling a little far away, I know what I need to do, okay? I'll tell you what doesn't work. I'll tell you what doesn't work. Cleaning the house together. That don't work for me. <laughs> All right, I got to check that now. Where was I going? Doing something in ministry together, that doesn't necessarily do it either. 
sitting there watching TV, that can be enjoyable, but that doesn't do it either. Do what we did at first. Well, let me tell you what we first did. No, I'd like to tell you I was that spiritual, but we didn't pray together. We went to Country Kitchen, Worthington, Minnesota. We spent time together. We went out to eat. She bought a 55 cent salad. I bought a dollar eighty country gal combo. For less than three bucks, we had our first date. I thought, man, this girl's going to be economical, and thank God she still is. Amen. I knew she was the one right then. Amen. But let me tell you something. If I am feeling separated from her, let me tell you, all I need to do is just be together. It might spend time together. You know, just maybe. Maybe it's just out in the backyard, sitting around our table, drinking a glass of iced tea. Or maybe it's watching a, a fire in the chimney. Or, or maybe it's going for a walk. Or, or maybe it's spending a half a day, you know, just driving around Houston doing this, that, or the other. But as we spend the time together, we fall back in love. You know what we were doing? We're doing the first things. And let me tell you something. If you want to fall back in love with Jesus, spend time with Him. Be with Him. Sit at His feet like Mary did. Come on. Climb up the mountain like Joseph did and go in, like, like Joshua did and go into the tent of meeting. And even though Moses is gone from the presence, let me tell you something Joshua said. I'm going to be here with God. I'm not leaving here because there's something Something good happening here. Come on. When you're with him, you'll fall back in love with him. I know it's hard for us tough guys to fall in love with Jesus. But let me tell you something. It's all right. There's a man kind of love. Amen. Where you say, I respect you, Jesus, and I love you, Jesus. Because you've done everything for me. Come on. Amen. How many of you know we can't outdo, outgive what he's done for us? Amen. Go back and do the first things again. Would you stand with me today?